Welcome back to Daybreak. Hey, in case you missed it, this is my last week at WFAA, and we are celebrating by revisiting some of the most impactful health stories that I've shared over the last seven years. Um, sometimes as a reporter, you don't really know the ripple effect of a story that you tell, but this one extended at least one life. Quilting is a special hobby for Liz Lancaster. These are more than just blankets or bed covers. Quilts mark important life events. This is a thousand hexagons sewn by hand. This one at her side through a taxing journey. Just in my normal routine, showering, I felt this tiny lump. A lump, but it wasn't on her breast. It was more intimate than that. And it was the size of a pencil eraser. And as I went on long walks, that area would become irritated. And so I thought, hmm, this something's not right. Curious about this lump that wasn't going away, Liz scheduled a doctor's appointment. She actually probably came in much earlier than many women would. It's possible her diligence saved her life. Five days later called me and said, you have vulvar cancer. I'm like, I have what? Vulvar cancer is relatively rare. About 6,000 women are expected to be diagnosed this year. Compared to cervical cancer diagnoses, 12 to 14,000 women, and ovarian cancer, 22,000. Women sometimes don't want to go get it checked out, and so there's a lag time of many months before it gets identified. Dr. Dustin Manders at Texas Oncology sees about one woman each month with vulvar cancer. Mostly, he says, women in their mid to late 60s. The most common symptoms of vulvar cancer would be things like vulvar irritation, itching, burning, sometimes bleeding, and almost always some sort of knot or bump. Liz caught her cancer early. She went through six weeks of chemo and radiation, and now she's cancer free. I'm good. You feel good? I feel great. With scientists still navigating this field, it's still a bit of a mystery how this cancer develops and why in older women. Part of it was like, what did I do? What did I not do? One of the factors that can lead to vulvar cancer is an infection millions of Americans have, the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Not every vulvar cancer is going to be an HPV-related cancer, but it is a risk factor. Another argument, says Dr. Manders, for getting the HPV vaccination. The vaccine has been around for 12 years, initially for people ages 12 to 26, but it's just been approved for adults up to 45 years old. Manders says the vaccination is a good idea. We think that it can be protective against about 70% of cervical cancer, and uh, certainly I think it would reduce the risk of vulvar cancer as well. Liz, who's been married for 34 years and works at a church, isn't a loud person, but her cancer diagnosis inspired her to get vocal about the HPV vaccination. You have the opportunity to make a wise health decision. Why would you do it? Now with cancer behind her, there was one thing left to do. And I finished it. To complete this part of her journey. It was my symbol that it really is all good. And Liz is here with me this morning. Oh, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too. We've kind of stayed in touch and remained friends this whole time. Yes. <laughs> which has been so nice for me. Um, tell us about your health. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling good. I've had three surgeries since the original interview. Um, the most recent one was this past September. All of them were precancerous areas that my medical team thought they needed to take care of. Mm. Some of those surgeries were more extensive than others, mm -hmm. but at this point, I'm good. Was the recovery time rough on you or was it simple? Um, no, um, the ones that I had in March and April of 2020 were rough. Yeah. Um, and, but, you know, I got through it. I have an amazing support network. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one of the reasons why this story stood out to me was because of what happened right after we aired it. We aired it, it was 10 o'clock one night, and I got a message from a woman named Nancy, and she said, 
I think I have the same thing. Can you please connect me with Liz? And so I emailed Liz and I said, do you mind if this woman reaches out to you? And she said, yeah, sure. And tell us kind of what happened after that. So Sonia messaged me immediately. Um, I was getting ready for a business trip. So I contacted Nancy that day and made arrangements to meet her as soon as I returned. And so Nancy and I met and we became fast friends. And so we continued. She had surgery, not much after we had met. And she was recovering, but there were still things going on. And um, in September of 2020, she passed away. Um, she had developed lung cancer. Mm. And so it was hard. Um, but in the time we had together, we were very dear friends. And, um, you know, you're a woman of faith. I feel like there was a purpose for that connection. Definitely. So on my first chemo session, my prayer was that God give me a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so consistently through this journey that has happened in meeting Nancy and our husbands connected and we'd go out together as couples. Yeah. And so it really was impactful. I love that. And I love that you're here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you for letting me have this Blessings voice. Blessings for continued health. Thank you. Yeah.